In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to dress a resident who has a weak arm. And to me, the skill is a little bit unfair if you have the skill on your certified nurse and assistant examination. And the reason why I think it's unfair is because you're supposed to be dressing a person who has a weak right arm. However, you're dressing a mannequin who, you know, if you think about it, would be more like dressing a quadriplegic in traditional clothing. If we had a quadriplegic, we usually have more adaptive clothing, clothing that had snaps and no Velcro. Regardless, we're going to perform this skill. We're going to pass our test. You all know how we always begin. We've washed our hands. Excuse me, we've knocked on the door, washed our hands. I'm going to go ahead and put on some gloves. I've provided privacy. And of course, I've explained the procedure to the patient. In this particular instance, because it could involve nudity, this skill will be played on a medical mannequin. And the nurse at the test site, the evaluator, will answer on behalf of the mannequin. All right, so I've asked the resident which garments would they like to put on. I gave them a choice of two tops, and she said that she wanted to wear this top. So now that our resident has chosen which shirt she'd like to wear, I'm actually going to conserve some of my strength. I like to start off with dressing the bottom half of the mannequin first. So I've done my introduction, washed my hands, I'm applying gloves, privacy has been maintained because I pulled the curtain. I'm not overexposing the resident. I'm exposing exactly what needs to be exposed. She still has her gown on. I've uncovered her feet because I'm going to start off with placing the socks. I'm going to open up the socks open up the opening, stretch it out a little bit. Don't um, pinch on your toes because they could have gout, which is a, a painful, um, like an inflammation of the toes. I'm gonna spread the sock just to make sure, smooth it out, just to make sure that there's no wrinkles. Remember, we don't leave wrinkles in our resident's clothing or in their gowns because those wrinkles could cause an irritation or an indentation that could later lead to skin breakdown, AKA a pressure sore. Miss Lucas, you're still doing okay? Great, we're gonna start next with your pants. I'm not going to overexpose. What I'm looking for is the tag within the pants so I know which um, way to place the pants. And so the tag goes towards the back. I'm gonna gather up one leg of the pants without putting my hand or my arm all the way through it. If you do something like this, you're contaminating yourself. So you don't want to do that. Instead, just gather it up from the outside. And now repeat the process on the opposite side. Remember that for our video purposes, I don't walk around to the other side of the bed um, as much as I would in the real world. So at the test site, if you're not able to um, get the, the leg, the resident's leg into the pants um, from one side of the bed, feel free to walk over to the other side, okay? So now that I've done that, my next tax is to bring those pants up without overexposing the resident. So I'd like to find the waistline. And as I shimmy the pants up, I also bring the gown up. And it's a lot easier to do this if your patient is flat. Anytime we're repositioning a patient, you want the head of the bed to be in the supine or the flat position. All right, and so my pants are now placed. Just want to make sure it's covering up her bottom. I'm going to raise you just a little bit, okay? Great. I'm now gonna walk around the other half of the bed in order to um, remove the sleeve from the left arm. Whenever you're undressing, you undress with the strong arm first. Undress the strong first, but dress the weak first. I'm gonna raise you up just a little bit. I'm gonna untie your gown. Thank you so much. And yes, the gown has snaps, and this would be um, something similar to an intravenous line. However, for your state of Florida examination, your patients will not have IVs, so you don't necessarily have to have a snap gown. I cannot guarantee whether the gown will have snaps or not, which is why I'm teaching you how to remove a gown the traditional way. So I've now undressed the strong arm.
And if you feel comfortable, if you feel like lowering the rail, you can. Sometimes I work around the rail. It's what's you know safest for your patient, of course, but also your comfort level. And right now I'm comfortable working with the rail there. As with the pants, I'm not gonna stick my arm into the sleeve. I'm gonna gather the sleeve like hosiery. Gather it, gather it, gather it. I'm gonna make sure I open it up. I'm going to support the hand as I bring the sleeve up. Let me know if you feel any pain. And I'm going to allocate the front half of the jacket. At the test site, there will be a nurse. You can ask her for turning help, but I'm used to maneuvering patients, so I'm going to turn her by myself. I'm going to go ahead and cross your legs. I'm just gonna turn you a little bit. I'm gonna support this arm. So I'm gonna go under the arm, get the hip and the shoulder, and on the count of three, we're just gonna turn a little bit, okay? One, two, three, and let's turn. Make sure that you bring the gown forth. Make sure those pants are on well, and our pants are on. And now I'm gonna push this through, making sure that I get out as many wrinkles as possible. And I can always finish the wrinkle, the de-wrinkling process, that's what I'm gonna call it when I get through to the other side. Remember with this arm, you have to support it. This is the weak arm. So if you do this, they're gonna count you off. They're gonna mark you off. So you wanna make sure that you actually support that arm. I'm gonna reposition you some, okay? I'm gonna uncross this leg. Walk back around. So this is one of those skills where if you get this during your exam, you're pretty much given more time. And so for a state of full examination, you're given 31 up to 41 minutes to complete your three skills, which include hand washing and gloves. But if you get this skill, chances are you're gonna be the one who's given, who's on, who will receive close to 41 minutes to complete their test. So now I just have to simply move my patient, turn her, bring the jacket out, and now dress the strong arm. The weak arm is dressed. I'm going to move you over towards me some, okay? To make sure my patient does not roll too far, I bend the leg nearest me, bend that knee, turn her. On the count of three, we're going to turn, okay? One, two, three. I'm going to bring this jacket out. Correction if I overexpose. This tends to be the hard part, believe it or not because remember it supposed supposedly the mannequin has a weak right arm but it's a mannequin so all of the extremities are weak and they're stiff so it's really hard for me to get this jacket onto the arm without me overextending the arm so I'm going to go ahead and apologize if I bend your arm too much in the real world, we would not be using this type of a jacket on a patient who was a quadriplegic. <laughs> so this again is one of the reasons why I think this skill is, it's not the best skill, it's not realistic. I'm going to straighten out the wrinkles, make sure they're all removed, turn my patient back towards me, reposition her, correction, for not supporting that hand, you all heard it hit. I don't wanna get marked off. Before I can remove that gown, I'm going to have to fasten all of the snaps and or buttons. Okay, now take this to the laundry basket. Always leave your patients nice and neat. The pants are a little bit bigger than I would have liked, but we have totally dressed our mannequin. There, so I can get rid of some of those extra wrinkles. 
compliment your patient on how well he or she looks. So don't forget to give your resident the call bell to hold. Uh, make sure you open the curtains um, so that they're not left claustrophobic. Wash your hands. If you have not lowered the bed, make sure you do so. And if you have um, taken down or lowered the side rail before you ever leave your resident, make sure you pull the side rail back up. One more thing I want to state that for the state of Florida examination, whether the rails are there or not, that does not pass nor fail you because your state of Florida examination is geared toward all adult populations and people who um, are in the home, home care, they may not have medical beds, they could have traditional beds. So as long as you can turn someone safely um, and you can do so without them falling off the bed or getting too close to the edge, whether the rail is there or not, you should be good. All right, if you have any questions, you can find us at fltraining.com. And if you want to take a CNA exam prep course or a CNA trainer trainer course right here in Florida, you know how to find us. Have a great day and goodbye.